If you watch this channel since 2017, you would know how much I adore The Sin in the Sentence by Trivium. If you don't, welcome to the channel. And um, I adore The Sin in the Sentence very much. That album made me fall in love with this band and go back and re-listen some of their classic albums like Shogun. To top an album like that, I thought, and I still think, uh, that would be a really, really hard job considering The Sin in the Sentence had such an amazing writing, such an amazing everything. You, you really have to be a top tier metal band to top a work like this in a sentence. Luckily, it's Trivium we're talking about, so uh, they are indeed top tier metal band. So I think it's needless to say that they did top this in a sentence with this one. What the Dead Men Say might be one of the best true metal journeys of 2020 so far, as it encompasses so much variety and so much nostalgic sound of Trivium. And my full album reaction, which is by the way available to all of my patrons over on Patreon, I felt like I was a part of a journey, an epic journey with very, very good conclusion. Variety, I think, is what enhances this experience the most. This album has variety in everything, from drums, from guitars and bass to the vocals. Before this album came out, we had four singles, which is quite a lot for a 10 song album, especially considering one of those unreleased songs and it is an intro that was released with one of the singles. So technically all we were left with is five other songs. Some people felt like it kind of spoiled their experience and I kind of see how it would be the case. For me personally though, it was actually impressive that they managed to release such amazing singles and still have five full amazing songs in the album waiting for us, none of which is worse or weaker than the singles themselves. The album opens up with an intro track, nine in Roman numerals, that leads into a title track called What the Dead Men Say. It's a melodic and heavy moshi track with a lot of uh, references to older Trivium. I didn't really get into that track at first, but with couple of more listens I realized the true genius of it and how how well it's paced I find it extremely enjoyable it's hard for me to like fully wrap this whole song in one sentence because there's so much happening to it and that's the case for majority of the songs on this album there is just a lot of things happening and you really have to listen for yourself to sort of come up with your own thoughts about it and then come to this review uh, where I will sort of express my opinions. Next song is Catastrophist, which was a uh, first single we've heard from this album. And I fell in love with uh, this song. And it's not surprising that it's the first single and uh, I think the most popular song so far on the album because of its explosive and catchy chorus and kick-ass solo with a kick-ass breakdown. Has done one of my favorite songs of the album, but it's nowhere near the heaviness and the intensity that we're about to enter with the next track on the album called Amongst the Shadows and the Stones, which is again one of the singles. It's probably my favorite song of the album. It's an extremely enjoyable metal journey with three solos in the row, amazing drums by Alex Bent. I mean, this song is just like everything good about Trivium in one and I appreciate it very, very fucking much. It's got mind-blowing riffs, it's got mind-blowing mosh pit sections, it has everything. You truly realize the genius behind it. And when it finally grows on you, you realize that it's pretty much one of the best 5 minutes and 40 seconds in Trivium's history. Bleed Into Me is where album takes a little bit of a chill turn. Not a particularly crazy or mind-blowing song. I've made a vocal cover of that song, so if you go and check it out and leave a like and drop a comment on that, I'll be very happy. But it's just, it's a decent song. Nothing compared to what we've already heard and what we're about to hear. It's just a very, very decent song. The Defiant is definitely my favorite chorus of the album, uh, alongside Sickness Onto You. It also features one of my favorite solos. And it's, it's an overall just a, a more basic uh, song, I guess, with a more basic structure. This one is just great and I love it. Sickness Onto You also features one of my favorite choruses, probably probably even more favorite than The Defiant. It's probably one of the best choruses they've ever wrote, but this song shines not in the chorus, this song shines with its solo and its motherfucking breakdown. 
which I'm struggling to imagine how amazing it would be during the live show. Whenever we get live shows back, that's definitely going to be a banger and a half. Scattering the Ashes is a very similar track to Bleed Into Me in that it's a bit more of a softer track in between heavy tracks. It's sort of like an interlude. It features a lot of uh, singing and bass, <laughs> uh, but it's more of an interlude to undoubtedly the heaviest song of this whole album called Bending the Ark to Fear. That groove is everything. That groove is everything I live for. It's really a heavy metal masterpiece, if you really think about it. With so much anger, so much intensity and viciousness packed into it, it just creates an amazing and authentic Trivium experience. It makes you want to start a mosh pit in the middle of your room. The classic Trivium riff helps a lot. It has to be fans' favorite because of those nasty, nasty breakdowns. It just ties everything together in this record, and I think this is a very, very much one of the best Trivium songs we've had in years. And finally, the album closes with the 10th track called The Ones We Leave Behind. Uh, I didn't think much of it when I originally listened to it, and I still really don't listen to it that much. I don't consider it a bad song, but you know, it's just, it's not, it doesn't compare to some of the other tracks on this album. It just doesn't deliver quite as much as the previous song did, and that's, I guess, the contrast thing. If I heard this song anywhere else in the album, I think it would be more enjoyable for me to listen to. But it's still, nonetheless, a pretty good track, and if you like softer stuff from Trivium, go ahead and listen to it. And we're fitting out straight out of the album. I thought personally that it would be insanely hard for them to top this in the sentence because of how amazing that record was. This is better. This is better than the sin in the sentence. People may have other opinions, but this is the correct one. So what makes this album so special? As I mentioned in the beginning, variety. The riffs and the solos are up a notch from the sin in the sentence, which is insane because I, again, didn't think that would be possible. Just as everything else, to be honest, especially vocals, Matt Heafy has stepped up his game so much from the sin in the sentence. There's so much more like intense screaming, but also singing. I think singing sounds much better than the sin in the sentence. It's just a significant improvement in every field in this record, which is again, bass is fat, very fat, very prominent in all of the songs. And it's very prominent in the mix, which is as it should be, it's perfect. And finally, Alex Bent. That's it, Alex Bent. Here are my rankings to all of the songs of the album with a final thought on the album overall. Yeah, let me know what you think about this album down in the comments and let me know what are your favorite tracks, let me know what your top 10 looks like. And shout out to all of my patrons. In my silver division, they are Alex Greeley, Maverick McFarlane and Simon Lesman. In my golden division, they are Antoine Saint Laurent, Bailey, DS9 or Dennis Sledge, Josh Berg, Lucas Gill, and Richard Junvren. And finally, Diamond Division, Dakota Sherman, Deadpool Inc. or Isaiah, Jackson Press, Gates, Travis Malone, and Tyler Boglio. Boglio. I think I got it right. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. If you're interested in supporting this channel, make sure you go check out Patreon. There's new perks available. And that's it for now. That's it for now. Thank you all so much for checking out this album review. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.